Once you've picked out your three pieces for your artwork, you are then going to decide the easiest one to make first. And when you have it, this is where you need to take a moment and reflect. There are no lines at all that are going to be on your artwork. Lines will be created by having one shape connect to another shape. So you have to look very closely at your own. Do you have any white spaces that overlap with a white space? If so, you are going to have to do some work to switch out and add in grays or blacks or whatever so that as you look at your composition it goes like a white to a black to a gray so that everything is separated. Once that is done, you then need to decide what your base color is going to be. And different people will choose different things. There's not a wrong answer. You just have to pick one and commit to it. So I'm going to decide that my base color is going to be this light gray here. Once I know that, I will be able to get my paper. I am only going to give you one sheet of each tone for each piece that you are making. So it's important to not make mistakes or else you'll have to live in the scrap bin. Then you will go to the paper cutter and this will need to be cut down to 12 by 12. All right, once you have decided, and in my case I decided gray was on the bottom, then you are ready to start cutting out your pieces. I recommend starting with the easiest first and using as many different tools as I have available. I have compasses of all kinds, I have tracing symbols of all kinds. This video I'm going to show you how to use the French curve to its fullest advantage. And then the hardest part that students have is to figure out, well, how big do I build it on here to make sure that it ends up looking like this. Basically, the piece that you have, we are going to take everything times five. So if I measure across and this is two inches, well then it's going to be about 10 inches across on this sheet of paper here. Once you know those dimensions, if you have an unusual shape like this, it is helpful to go ahead and measure out with your ruler a box that you could draw and construct that in, and I'm just kind of making this up as I go. And you would measure more carefully than I clearly am. Then, it was easy for you to draw out unusual organic shapes here because your hand could stay small. But once your hand has to start shifting over the paper, it becomes more challenging. And that's where French curves are really helpful. If you take the curve and just trace it, then I will make you take that piece off your project and try again. These are intended for you to use to help create a shape. So for example, I can use this curve for the top bit, and then I can take it and twist it and modify it to get myself down and around to the other bit. So I want my curve to come inward. And then I can use that to help me get over to this bit. And you'll see how I am slowly modifying and creating my own shape using the French curve. If you realize, well, this is just slightly too small, that's why they have these gaps so that you can remake that shape just a little bit bigger. Once you have it all drawn out, and I'm just going to make this up, the way that it's supposed to be, then you're going to go to your X-Acto blade. The cap comes off and it goes on the back. If your cap doesn't want to stay on the back, then it goes underneath your blue mat. Your blue mat has to be down. You remember from eighth grade, you hold this like a pencil. You twist your paper as you go. If you need a refresher on how hard you have to push into the paper to get it to actually cut, do some practices. And then we always, as soon as our hand starts to get away from our body, we twist our paper as we work. 
All right, once you have your pieces cut out, which I clearly did a terrible job, if yours looks like this, you should lay it down and retrace it and try it again. There's a couple of different approaches. One approach is to cut out all your pieces and kind of lay it out like a big puzzle. And then once you have all your pieces, you glue it down. Another approach is to cut and glue as you go. It really is individual what type of person you are. I have all sorts of little clips um, to help you keep things and then obviously make sure that things get back in your drawer so you don't lose any of your pieces. Also, if you have pencil around the edges, you're going to want to try and erase that, or there's a chance that you could just flip it over and still make it work within your composition. When you are ready to glue, you must get rid of your blue mat. I don't care if you set it on the floor or put it away, but no blue mat is on your tabletop. Then you need to get out a scrap piece of paper. Your choices are glue stick which you know how to do this, you take off the cap. You want to make sure this is not the time to be like careful with the glue. You use all the glue. And then be careful, oh, just like there, not to tear your piece as you work. Your next option, aside from glue stick, is rubber cement. Scrape off your sides. And then again, this is less harmful to your piece. You brush it on, and you're gonna find that you go through a lot of these scrap pieces as you work. And then you lay your piece down. You gotta really take the time to kind of squish it into place, because if these can peel off, you will lose points. If you place something down and you don't like where it goes, you can peel it off. The trick is the rubber cement will generally always peel off, whereas the um, glue stick will not. When you get rubber cement where you don't want it, you're going to let it dry. And then I have these rubber cement removers in the bag. Once you have dry rubber cement, you just brush this over the top of it, and it will peel away all of those little, like, booger-looking things that get on there.